Hey everybody, if you wanna understand what the Fed is doing, what they're thinking, this video is for you. Invest about 12 minutes, and if you do, you will understand Fed policy better than almost everybody that's out there, at least 99.9% .9 of the population, guys. We are gonna teach monetary policy with more nuance than the average classroom. Let me talk about the average classroom for just a second. Basically, what we do in the average classroom is we say if the Fed is lowering interest rates, they're being stimulative, they're being expansionary, they're trying to expand growth, okay? Or if they are raising interest rates, they're being contractionary. They're trying to contract growth, okay? That's basically how we teach it, kind of in this binary way. But really, we should have a little bit more nuanced approach. And that's what this is about, so let's get to it. This is our lens here at Econ Busters that we think we should teach monetary policy through, and it will bring way better understanding, we believe. So here is how it works, okay? The Fed can put their foot either on the brake pedal or on the gas pedal. That's right, they have two pedals. Sounds kind of binary, but don't worry, it's gonna get more nuanced than that. They can have their foot either on the brake pedal or the gas pedal. And what they can be doing, if their foot is on the brake pedal, is they can be pushing down on that brake pedal or letting up on that brake pedal. Here's the big thing. If their foot is on the brake pedal, they're being restrictive, okay? They're trying to restrain growth. And if they're pressing down on that brake pedal, they're becoming more restrictive. If they're letting up, they're becoming less restrictive. Or their foot could be on the gas pedal, okay? If their foot's on the gas pedal, they're being accommodative, okay? They're being stimulative, if you like. And what they could be doing, again, is pushing down on that gas pedal, becoming more accommodative, or letting up on the gas pedal, becoming less accommodative, okay? And then there's finally one more thing that they could be doing, which is not have their foot on either pedal. That's right, that's what the Fed can be doing, okay? And we can understand all of this, just stick with me. But to understand it, one of the biggest things we need to understand is there is this thing called R star. R star is the neutral rate, okay? It is, the interest rate that if their policy rate was at it in real terms, the Fed would not be being restrictive nor accommodative, okay? Again, let me try this again, okay? So the neutral rate is referencing to their policy rate, which is the federal funds rate, a very short-term interest rate the Fed has a lot of influence over, okay? And it's saying that, hey, in real terms, not nominal terms, in real terms, if they get that policy rate, that federal funds rate, to that, again, one more time, in real terms, they are not being accommodative nor restrictive. They're being neutral towards the economy. So if that federal funds rate, again, their policy rate in real terms, gets to that, their foot is not on either pedal. Now just understand this is September 25th, 2024, and we're gonna be kind of using the recent past and today as our case study. And right now, they're being restrictive, that's right. Even though they cut interest rates by 50 basis points seven days ago, okay, cut interest rates, they are still being restrictive. Their foot is still on the brake pedal, and let me help you understand that. Okay, so two and a half years ago, the Fed began to increase interest rates, okay? And the reason they began to increase interest rates is because they saw inflation as a big problem, right? Inflation rates started to tick up well above their target. The Fed likes inflation rate to be about 2%. It got well above 2%. And what you do if you're a Fed official when that inflation rate starts ticking up is you try to restrain the economy to bring prices back down. And so that's what they did. They began a rate hiking cycle. And what they did for about 14 months was they increased interest rates and they got to what we call their terminal rate, which is actually a range, okay? Terminal meaning the highest they raised interest rates during this rate hiking cycle, and that's what it was. And they got to 5.25 to 5.5, and that's a nominal one right there, okay? That's nominal terms for their federal funds rate, again, which is their policy rate, which is a very restrictive stance, okay? So they raised interest rates all the way to a range of 5.25 to 5.5. Now, for this video, I'm just gonna pick a number inside of that range. So I'm gonna go with 5.3, okay? So 5.3, and I'm gonna call that the terminal rate, the highest that they raised interest rates too. Again, that was a nominal interest rate. So what we need to do with nominal interest rates is subtract off the inflation rate. Now when they got there, okay, which is about 14 months ago, the inflation rate was 3.3%, okay? 
So we're going to subtract off that inflation rate to get what we really want, which is the real interest rates, the real or the, the policy rate in real terms. Okay. Uh, uh, defining it in real interest rate terms. Okay. It was 2.0. So the next thing to do, understanding monetary policy, is to compare, okay? Our star, again, we're estimating, or at least from the Fed officials speak, to be somewhere around 1%. Some people put it kind of like a little bit lower, like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, but I think if you listen to all the Fed officials out there, I think I'm pretty comfortable with saying they think that the neutral rate, again, which is a real interest rate, or it's, it's the federal funds rate in real terms, is 1%. So this is where they were actually at 14 months ago in real terms, and this is the neutral rate. So what were they? They were restrictive, okay? Their benchmark rate in real terms, the real interest rate for the benchmark rate, was a full percentage point above. So they were restrictive, and they held there, and the inflation rate was ticking down. It was ticking down. And so they just stayed there for a while, still worried about inflation. They really wanted to see inflation get much closer to, to um, target. Just to let you know, the inflation rate got almost four times, or actually got a little bit more than four times above, if you are if you look at non-core readings, okay? They got up to 9.1%, which is over four times above their target. So they definitely wanted to stay in this restrictive stance for a while, and they did, okay? They did for the next 14 months. And what was interesting is during that time, the last 14 months, by doing nothing, they actually were doing something. They were pressing down further on the brake pedal. Now, what does that mean? They actually didn't change interest rates. This was their terminal rate, but the inflation rate began to tick down. Now, when the inflation rate started to tick down, and by the way, it got all the way down to uh, the August reading, which was 2.5%. So over those 14 months, it got down to 2.5. Well, if you do the math now, 2.8%. Their, uh, their policy rate in real terms was 2.8%. Again, the neutral rate being 1%. What they're actually doing was becoming more restrictive, again, by actually doing nothing. There's a lot of nuance there, right? Just the inflation rate ticking down means the real interest rate goes up and when that real interest rate goes up, is, is heading up above 1% or is above 1% and going higher, that's a better way to say it, they are pressing down on the brake pedal. They're becoming more restrictive. And so that's why on September 18th, 2024, seven days ago, they cut interest rates and they had to make a decision. Should we go with 0.25 or 0.5? They were definitely ready to cut interest rates. And again, I need to help you understand something. Guys, that inflation rate had come down from 9.1 to 2.5, okay? It had come down substantially. They're getting really close to target at this time. So they were worrying much less about inflation and they saw some weakness in the job market. You see, the Fed, they have two mandates. They need to keep unemployment at full employment, which is an unemployment rate of around 4.3%, give or take a, a tenth of a percent, okay? And they want to keep the inflation rate again at 2%. They want to keep both unemployment rates and inflation rates low. Now, again, two and a half years ago, inflation rates shot up, and so all their attention went on to the high inflation rates, and so they put their foot down on the brake pedal, and they became restrictive, and then more and more restrictive. But now that it's September of 2024, they see balanced risk. Now, what's balanced risk? They actually think there's just as good a chance that the job that that unemployment rate is going to tick up, the job market is going to weaken, weaken that is, as the inflation rate ticking up. They see much more balanced risk. So they don't want to be as restrictive anymore. They want to start normalizing. What do you think normalizing means? They want to start getting the the, the policy rate back to the neutral rate. And so what did they decide to do? They decided to make a cut. And they actually went with 50 basis points, right? So their new range is 4.75 to 5.0, and I'm gonna pick a number in between it. So I'm just gonna go 50 basis points less than that, which is a half a percentage point. They took us down to 4.8%, I'm gonna say. Again, it's really a range, 4.75 to 5.0. So they took us down to here, so what happened? They became less restrictive. So what I think is really important, okay, a takeaway of this video is when they lowered interest rates by 50 basis points, we're not gonna say they're accommodative or stimulative. What we're gonna say is they're becoming less restrictive, that their foot is still on the brake pedal. They just let up on the brake pedal. That is very important to understand. They just let up on the brake pedal, okay? They, instead of being 1.8 above the neutral rate, that's what they were, 1.8 above the neutral rate, they're now just 1.3 above the neutral rate. 
Now, if you start listening to people out there, a lot of people will say, hey, we probably got about five or six or seven interest rate cuts still to come. So let's just talk about five cuts and seven cuts, why people would say those types of things. Well, why five cuts? Well, if you take a look at this, the difference between 2.3 and 1%, okay, is 1.3, really close to 1.25, by the way. Well, it, when the Fed does cuts, they usually do them in 25 basis point increments, a quarter of a point, right? 0.25 percentage points. So that's how much they usually cut. Well, how many cuts do they need right now to get back to neutral? About five. And so that's why people say, five cuts. We think five more cuts are coming. We've already got, what they really say is when we cut by the 50 percentage points, it's almost like we got two cuts in one, okay? Because again, the normal cut is 0.25. So we kind of had two cuts in one, and then we have five more cuts of a quarter point still to come. Now, how about the people that say 7% more cuts coming? They say, they think this inflation rate is gonna to continue to come back to target. They think it's on a downward trajectory, it's gonna continue on that downward trajectory, and we should probably come very close to target. So if the inflation rate gets to 2%, okay, well, what do I have to do? I gotta bring this back up to 2.8, okay, percent. So now they've got more work to do, right? The difference between the current federal funds rate in real terms and the neutral rate, again, a real interest rate, the difference is 1.8%, again, very close to 1.75. So seven 25 point basis cuts or 20, 20 quarter of a point cuts, okay, seven quarter of a point cuts, get you 1.75, pretty much closes the gap right there. So there you see, we can see why people would argue for, eh, probably about five, six, or seven more cuts. Now again, that's, if everything kind of just stays on the current course, if there's no craziness that happens in the world, this is what we could kind of think is the base case. Again, craziness can happen. Exogenous things can change in the world. And so this could all change based on that. But if we don't get any craziness and we stay on our base case, the normal path that we're on, it's true. We're probably going to see that inflation rate tick down, okay, eventually in the next, whatever, six to 12 months down closer to target. And they're going to need to do probably up to seven cuts, okay? And that's where those numbers are coming from. Now, once they get the federal funds rate in real terms down to here, okay, so they get those cuts in alignment, what do they need to do? Get this to three point or 3%, uh, percent, and that's why you hear in nominal terms what people think the federal funds rate might be going to once they get to there, okay? And they've got this at 1%, their foot is not on either pedal. It's not on either pedal. They're at neutral now. They're not being restrictive. They're not being accommodative. I hope that made sense to you. I hope that brings nuance and understanding to what the Fed is doing. We'll see you in the next video.